Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Cloud Study Jam on Conversational Flows. This meeting is being recorded. Um, we ask that you keep yourself on mute unless you're prompted to, uh, to do so by the presenters. Uh, please use the chat window for any questions that you might have. So this event is being hosted by Worcester as a Google, as a premier Google Cloud partner focused on collaboration design. It is our mission to help companies maximize their use of the cloud. My name is David Moore. I'm the director of marketing here at Worcesta, and I'll now pass it over to my two esteemed colleagues, Deanna and Vinay, to introduce themselves. My name is Vinay. Oh, sorry, we're we're on now. Go ahead. Oh, we're on now. Right. <laughs> hey guys, uh, I'm Vinay Thacker. I'm the CTO here at Worcesta. Hey guys, I'm Deanna Dial. Uh, I do cloud strategy here at Worcesta. Super excited to have you all here today. If you uh, feel like saying hello, uh, contrary to what they've just said, would love to hear uh, any anyone who wants to give a, a brief intro. One thing that might be helpful is um, to understand if, if anyone on the line is a developer um, or if you have any particular experience with GCP or anything in particular you want us to dive into in the session today, you can feel free to say hello to the group if you want or... Uh, put it in the chat. Um, the content today I'll say is um, not necessarily deep as a developer. I'm not a developer myself and I was able to get through it pretty easily. Um, so if we, if we do have any developers on the line, let me know. Um, or anyone who's specifically interested in anything, feel free to pop it in the chat or say hi. Um, also stop, stop us at any time if you have questions. I think we'll have extra time in our sessions today. All right, note takers, we'll, we'll jump in. Again, feel free anytime, you can put it in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll make sure and address it. So overview of what we're gonna be doing today, we're talking about conversational flows and specifically a product offered by Google Cloud called Contact Center AI. Uh, in terms of the agenda, we'll take a few minutes here at the top of the call to give you an overview and talk about today's scenario. We're going to pretend we all work as a travel agent. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, then we've got an hour to an hour and a half um, for the lab itself. Uh, we'll start by setting up Dialogflow, which is the um, product in particular that we will be working with. Um, we'll create an agent, we'll create an intent. I'll tell you what all that is here in just a sec. Um, and we'll round out this lab um, by completing an end-to-end -end flow where we also gather some information so that we can fulfill the customer's request um, as, a, as a chat bot, if you will. Uh, we'll leave some time at the end to ask questions, but please feel free to pop in questions as we go. Um, and we'll, we'll round out some uh, next steps at the very end. So again, we probably will not take the full two hours, so feel free to make it conversational uh, as we go through. All right, so what are we doing? Uh, let's pretend that you've been asked to build out a plan to help you increase net promoter score uh, and increase customer satisfaction. Uh, of course, everyone wants to do that. There's lots of ways to go about it. Um, but the one way in particular that we'll be focusing on today is how we might use technology to um, provide some um, basically like call, call center rep type of interaction with a customer. And uh, Contact Center AI is the, the broad platform. Dialogflow is the individual technology that we'll be working with today. And some of the outcomes that you might expect if you were to implement this, this technology is to increase call availability. Um, so free up, your, free up your humans to be able to communicate with your customers more readily by essentially using technology to field some requests. Um, Contact Center AI is a great way to remove any complicated menu systems. If you think of the old uh, call in, press one for this, press two for that, press eight for this, um, you can remove a lot of that by um, inserting a chat bot actually at the beginning of the flow. And um, overall, um, you might be able to achieve some shorter handling times if you let the technology figure out what the customer's interested in, what the request is about, 
um, then the actual time that a human might have to spend on the phone can be reduced pretty significantly. So that's the overarching ask and sort of goal of implementing this technology. Uh, so today in this lab, we're gonna teach you and work alongside you to use dialogue flow to create a conversational interface. And the few things we'll be doing in particular is um, design whatever your end user or customer's intention might be. So uh, phrases that customers might use to ask questions and um, enable the AI to essentially understand what the intention of the question is. Uh, we're gonna be pretending that we're an online travel agency and you'll be building out an agent. Um, or I love to use the word chatbot, but think of it as a virtual agent um, to field requests from customers. Um, and then we'll um, essentially set up a flow so that a customer can ask a question, match it to a particular query and kind of dive deeper from there and actually answer the customer's question. So that's the scope of what we'll do in our time together today. Uh, hopefully you guys know a little bit about Contact Center AI. Um, there's a cool YouTube video that I think we might have sent along at some point that's like five minutes and it goes over it, you know, in the proper Google way. Um, but essentially, Contact Center AI is composed of a few components. There's the conversational core, which is really the, the computer AI behind the whole thing. Uh, there's the virtual agent, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. So the computer agent, the chatbot, if you will. Um, then there's agent assist, which is actually um, infusing a human into the process to get deeper into the query, to provide some better feedback to customers, to provide a spot check on um, for instance, if you build out where you might want to share support links or something with an end customer like that, agent assist is a way of infusing humans into the process so that the computer's still running the conversation, but a human can infuse some additional intel. Um, and then insights is um, a, a deeper piece of it. Uh, just imagine you've, you've got this all set up and run through thousands of customer calls. You'll be able to extract insights on what people are actually interested in and asking about. Um, so that you can further refine how your virtual agent works and essentially get smarter, provide better customer service overall. So just a high level view of, of what Contact Center AI is as a technology. Uh, here's another way to look at it. Um, so the virtual agent, the green box, is where we'll be focusing today. And uh, the technology dialog flow can actually be used in both chat and voice. So as you're doing your testing on your side, you can either type in your query or you can actually say your query and um, the Google figures it out, right? And uh, that's the virtual agent piece of it. Uh, the human agent, because that part's a little bit more straightforward, right? Um, but essentially allows a, a human to assist in the process and then insights um, can be delivered in, in both interfaces. Um, the, the last box at the bottom there is there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, right? So um, if the customer is chatting in, um, the AI essentially translates from text and can respond in speech or vice versa. And there's a bunch of natural language processing going on in the background as well. So that's all the underlying AI. Uh, if any of you have used Google products, right? Hey, Google, and it automatically knows what you're saying. It's, it's all that great technology essentially at, at your fingertips. So here's an example, a quick example of a virtual agent. So imagine the, the query could be one of the three on the left-hand side. It could be something specific like what's the forecast or what's the weather right now? Um, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow in Seattle? All this would be fed into your virtual agent. Um, essentially, you would teach it to forecast the intent of the question, right? Forecast weather, temperature, all getting at the same question, same intent. Um, and it can extract specific data. So in this case, time and location. And um, we'll show you today how an agent can ask questions to extract specific information that it might need to provide uh, the most accurate response. And as you go deeper, um, we're focusing on one lab today. There's another, a number of other labs in this full quest through this Quick Labs program. Um, the additional labs will actually go into how you can extract information from the customer's query and be able to provide more human-like, more robust answers. Uh, 
another way of uh, looking at it, getting maybe a little bit more technical. So the, the end user expression, whatever the customer end user says or types, um, goes into the agent and you essentially match it to an intent. And that'll be part of the training today, putting in a number of different phrases, questions that could be used to help forecast intent, what the question is essentially. And um, from that, we'll pull out the intent itself, which looks at some training phrases. Uh, we can code in some additional actions and parameters and use all of that to formulate a smart, um, relevant contextual response that goes back to the end user. And this flow essentially repeats. So in each back-to-back -back interaction, this is essentially what's happening in the background. No, one at, no one's asking any questions, so I'm assuming you guys know what I'm talking about here. Uh, but that's this is the, the, the bulk of the setup. And um, from this point, I think we'll, um, we'll talk about the specifics of the lab. So there's uh, one, two, three, four main components of the lab that we'll do today. It all starts with an agent and you can think of this agent as a, just like a human call center agent. Uh, the um, next part after you build out an agent, um, so you're training them essentially to handle the conversational scenario, which starts with the training phrases. So these are example phrases of what a user might say. You don't have to be exhaustive in this. We'll think of, of a few different ways that someone might say a question similar to the weather forecast. Uh, again, we're in the travel agency space. So imagine all the questions you might call your travel agent about. Um, got to change a reservation. I need details on my reservation. Um, any of that kind of stuff. You can enter a few trading phrases in there and then the Google AI will actually expand upon that. So you don't have to enter every single phrase that someone might say. Um, from there, the intent is essentially matched or um, understood, right? We understand what the question is and you can trigger certain actions, which is a, it could be a specific response or you could look at specific parameters to be able to ask a follow-up question, that sort of thing. And we'll go through a couple of those scenarios in the lab today. Ultimately getting to a response, right? Like, what do you want to say back to the person? Um, next piece of that. So once we get a basic conversational back and forth working, can ask a question and it'll respond with something useful. Um, we'll extract data specifically from the conversation. So um, you can ask a follow-up question as the virtual agent and pull out information like a name so that you can respond back to them and say, hey, David, thanks for asking. No problem, I'll get back to you, right? That sort of thing. It just makes it feel a little bit more, uh, more human and uh, more friendly, helps people maybe be a little bit more, more satisfied at the end of the day. Um, and the next piece here is called slot filling. Um, which think of just filling out all the information that you need to actually be able to respond to someone's request. So in the, in the weather example, right, you need to know where they are um, and, what, and what they're interested in specifically. In this travel agent scenario, uh, we will ask for a reservation number and um, a name um, to be able to help fulfill the, the customer's request. And um, in, in this case, you know, ask the question around, you know, what's what's your name and be able to pick up um, whatever whatever the person responds with. So that's an example of where you don't have to fill out every possible answer, right? The, the system is smart enough to know um, what's what. Um, so those are the basic components of what we're gonna go through together today. We'll create an agent, design intents to be able to answer a question, um, extract some data, and then fill out all the data necessary to be able to provide a really smart response. Uh, so that's it. If anybody has any questions before we get started, um, let us know. Otherwise, I think we're uh, about ready to jam. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, so this is Google Cloud Platform. Uh, GCP uh, is essentially uh, this this console here houses all products within Google Hub. Google Cloud Platform. So anything from spinning up VMs, uh, virtual machines for 
you know, a web server or a file server or any other sort of workload like that to databases, to Kubernetes, if you're familiar with some of that language, uh, you would do all of that uh, through here. That also includes things like Dialogflow or some of their uh, Google's machine learning APIs, things like that. So um, what we're gonna do first is enable the Dialogflow API. The, the way I like to interact with the Cloud Console in general is through this search box. There are so many different options on this menu on the left uh, that this ends up being just a really fast way to get through things. So I'm searching for Dialogflow. I'm gonna enable this API. Give that a second. Wonderful. Okay, from here, we are gonna go to the Dialogflow console and uh, just to make things easier, uh, we'll drop that link in the meet. Uh, when you click sign in with Google, uh, you'll want to make sure that you hit this uh, quicklabs.net account. Accept the terms of service. All right. Okay, so this is Dialogflow. Um, what we're going to do is start by creating an agent. Um, and we are gonna name this agent. Oh boy, I lost my, lost my place in my instructions. Pigeon travel. So up here, what says agent name? P-I-G-E-O-N dash travel. And I'm gonna just kind of follow the instructions rather literally here because uh, uh, dialogue, because of quick labs verify our steps along the way. Uh, it's helpful that we uh, are one for one with the instructions. Down here where it says Google projects, you can select a Quick Labs project. Wonderful. So we've basically created an agent, right? It doesn't do anything just yet, um, but we're gonna uh, change that. But before we do, I'm gonna walk you through kind of the layout of this uh, dialog flow uh, console. So off to the left, uh, there's a couple of uh, useful areas, right? So this gear icon is the settings in general for this project. Um, for this, for the purpose of this lab, we won't really get in here and, and play around other than to export our project towards the end. Um, but you can come in here and tweak, for example, uh, languages that you want uh, the AI to, to sort of be more fluent in. So if you specify a particular language, uh, Google is gonna adjust how it listens for conversation. Um, there are a couple other more advanced settings for you know how it should, do you want it to spell check or, or things like that? Um, that's the settings for Dialogflow. Along the left here, uh, these menus here kind of match what Deanna was describing earlier in this, in this uh, uh, talk. So intense is naturally where we're going to configure uh, intense and understanding what it is that the person engaging with your agent is trying to actually do. Uh, entities, um, which we'll get into, is how we extract data out of out of uh, that language. Uh, knowledge uh, is a uh, this is a pre uh, general release uh, feature, but essentially it. Uh, empowers dialog flow to take in information from other knowledge bases, right? So think you've got a bunch of help, help articles and things like that that you want the dialog flow agent to be able to pull from or sec suggest or recommend. Uh, that's where knowledge would come in. Uh, fulfillment is uh, essentially being able to uh, respond in a 
way that inter in, uh, that integrates with other systems that you might have, right? So imagine you've got a CRM and when a uh, user says, hey, I wanna book, uh, I wanna, I wanna book a hotel, right? Uh, when that engagement is complete, you may want to trigger something in your CRM to say, hey, this person actually engaged with us, or hey, uh, maybe we submit an order into your sales system, as an example. Integrations are about one-time, uh, one-click integrations through third-party vendors that uh, interact with Dialogflow. So an example might be like Avaya or other tele telephony systems. Um, so that's the general layout of, of Dialogflow. Okay. With all that said, do you guys have any questions about that before we get into actually creating this agent? Hey, uh, I have a question about um, the integration. Sure. Um, let's say we have a CRM and uh, uh, we want to use the dialogue flow or the virtual agent for the outbound calls that are not necessarily the outbound calls, but they're triggered by a certain action in our CRM system. Does it mean that we need to integrate with, let's say, a third party system like Twilio? And then, based on Twilio, we will be using the uh, dialogue flow solution that will automate the call itself. I apologize, I missed so, the first half of that question. Could you? <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. So um, let's say we have a CRM system, right? And we have um, um, an event in our CRM system, whatever, time, a time-based event or action-based event. And we want to pass it to invoke the virtual agent call to whatever party it is. Let's say we want to call to a provider or we want to call a customer on that specific case with a virtual agent. So there is no call in our system yet. So how this call is going to be generated? Do we need to integrate with the Twilio system first or like some kind of third party um, communication system? And maybe I'm not using the right vocabulary here, so help me out. But uh, it's it cannot be um, just the dialogue flow that we will be integrating with because the dialogue flow is not being able to invoke a call to a real phone number. Correct. Yeah. So there, uh, in that instance, yeah, you would be integrating with the third party uh, system. And there are mechanisms to, depending on the workflow, invoke particular parts of your dialogue flow, right? So mm -hmm. you can invoke, invoke that a particular intent uh, has, has uh, uh, occurred, for example. Uh, so correct, your thinking is correct on mm -hmm. how you okay. do that. Okay, thank you. S sorry, it's not really um, related to exactly the, the topic of the of the lab, but as you touched the integrations, I was like, okay, it's, a, it's my chance to, to pick your brain a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Well, no, thank you for, uh, for the question. Wonderful. So uh, the last part that I didn't actually actually one of the most important parts is uh, off to the right here is this simulator. So as we're working through this lab, um, what we're gonna, we can in real time interact with our, the agent that uh, we've created um, by typing in queries here off to the right. Um, great. And so to start, I mean, maybe we just do that, right? So let's say hi. Uh, what you get here is there's a default uh, response built into this agent. Uh, and it just says, you know, how can I help you? But this agent doesn't really do anything until we add some intents and, and add some interesting training information. Okay, so with that said, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna create our first intent. Uh, if you just navigating this, if you click over here where it actually says intents, that will bring a list of all of the intents. If you're in a mode where you're adding a bunch of intents as you're configuring the dialogue flow, you can just quickly hit this plus button uh, to get you uh, to the create screen. So just a quick shortcut. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going to do, so under intent name, we're going to name our intent. And we are looking to uh, 
be able to uh, name uh, a reservation here, create a reservation. So I'm going to call this name.reservation. Um, we're going to save this. What we are going to do is add training phrases as a first step. And I'm going to copy and paste a bunch, and I encourage you guys to do, do it uh, the same way, just uh, from the uh, quick lab itself. So there's four training phrases that it has. First is I want to change my name on my itinerary. Can I change my name on my reservation? And I need to change my name on the booking. And finally, I want to change my name on the hotel reservation. Wonderful. So we've added four training phrases. And as Deanna mentioned earlier, we don't have to be particularly exhausted, uh, exhaustive about adding every permutation of phrase. Um, but Google's AI is going to figure out uh, how to expand this and intelligently match intents uh, based off of uh, natural conversation. OK. Uh, then we're going to come down to the responses section. Right. And so the what we're trying to do here is say, hey, that dialogue flow, when a user comes to me and says something, if it matches the intent of changing the name on the reservation, uh, how do I want to respond? Right. And so to start, we're going to have a pretty basic response. Sure, I can help you change your name on the reservation. OK. We're going to hit save here. The intent was saved, and you'll see, that happened very quickly. But you'll see this little bubble down here where it said the agent training started. So that's that's Dialogflow actually training uh, the AI model for your for this specific agent. Uh, you saw that it completed, uh, and now we can interact with it as a first step. So we will say. Change name on booking, question mark. And I'll hit enter, and we'll see what the uh, agent said. The response was, sure, I can help you change the name on your reservation, which is the default response that we had set up here. And if you're uh, following along in the Quick Labs interface, it'd be a good time to pause and check your progress. I think we've done two so far. There's a progress check on creating an agent and then a progress check on defining the intent. Forgive me. So I'm going to toggle back over to that screen so you guys can see what Dana was just saying. Um, in here, uh, again, this is sort of the instructions here. You just check build an agent. Um, why can't I do that? Well, it's okay. You, you guys can do it if you're, if you're following along. And again, the value of doing that is it'll show that you've completed this lab. So you won't have to go through it again. Okay. Do you guys see this? So uh, where it says build an agent, I just hit check my progress. And then Quick Labs verified that yes, we did in fact build an agent. Um, and then we did also create this first intent. So I will check my progress there. Great, we did that correctly as well. Is everybody with me so far? So far, we uh, created the agent, which is just a you know a container. We created a single intent to change the name of a reservation, and all we've done so far is say, hey, if if Dialog sees a user have this intention, uh, respond with a simple message that says we can help. We haven't yet, you know, uh, done anything to actually help that person. Okay. Uh, 
So next up, we're going to go ahead and add some parameters to our intent. Uh, to do that, we're going to come, up, come back over to intents. We are going to click the name reservation that uh, this is the intent that we had just created. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a, I apologize, go back on the screen. We're going to actually create a follow-up uh, follow intent. So we've got this name.reservation intent that we created. Hit add follow-up intent. And then we're going to press custom. We will edit this intent. And just so we pass the checks with Quick Labs, we're going to rename this intent to be name.reservation dash uh, us, oh, I'm sorry, get yeah, name. Okay. We're going to press save there. And then we're going to add some training phrases here as well. And so here, we're, what we're looking to do with this intent is actually gather the uh, person that we're speaking with, what their, what their name is, right? And so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to give it some examples of names. So Sam, John, and Mary. You'll notice here what happened is that uh, Dialogflow automatically recognized that this, what you've typed in here is actually a type of person. Um, one, one quick caveat here, in general, this is okay, but for the purpose of the Quick Lab, uh, what we're going to do is actually adjust that recognition to a different data type. Uh, so if I come down here to sys.person, just going to ask you to change that to at sys.given name as the first name. And then we're going to save that. That step, as you're, you know, outside of this lab, as you're kind of creating and training your uh, agents, that step that we just did uh, is not strictly necessary. Um, as a checkpoint, let's just, just to see if we created that all correctly, we're going to check our progress against this custom intent. And it's saying that I did not complete uh, complete this step yet. So we'll see what I what I missed. I apologize. All right. First month. Thank you. Okay. So what I missed here was that uh, the response for the uh, for this intent. So when when this intent is matched, how do we actually want to respond to the user? I didn't actually <laughs> type the response. So what we're going to say is thank you, and then we're going to inject whatever the name is that the, that the end user supplied to the agent. Okay. Go back and see if that passes our check now. Great. Okay. How are you guys feeling? Uh, so, so far we've created an agent, we've created an intent, we've created a, a follow-up intent uh, in order to uh, get information from that user, right? To ask them what their name is. Um, and what we can do now is actually, let's go back to testing this out. So, um, Change name on booking. We'll use the same query that we had before. Um, so it on here. Mm 
e del meno. Okay. Let me go back here. Um, so one other thing that I missed here is I just I just didn't adjust this question here. So can I have your first name? Save. Change name on booking. Sure. Can I have your first name? First name is Vinay. And then it says, thank you, Vinay. Great. Uh, so we have an intent, a follow-up intent, and we've shown that we can extract data from that, uh, uh, from that conversation. OK. And so the last thing that we're going to want to do here is we want to inquire about more information, right? So in order to actually change the name on the reservation, an example, one thing that we might might be useful is what the actual reservation number is, right? So to do this, we're going to come back to this intense menu. Uh, we are going to go to our follow-up intent, which was name.reservation get name. Uh, under actions and parameters, uh, we want to add more information that we want to uh, extract from the user. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to name this reservation number because we want to ask a follow up question about what the reservation number is. Uh, the <coughs> entity is just going to be a number. It's just uh, we're expecting. You have a, a bunch of choices in terms of the data types that you're expecting the user to respond with. You know, it could be a date or a color or any. There's a, a long list of predefined things here. Uh, but we're going to make, make this a number. Uh, the value is going to be the how you want to name uh, this data, because we may want to, for example, in a response, Parrot that number back to them. And so here we're going to call this reservation number with a dollar sign. And as a last thing, we're going to make this required. Now, when we make this required, uh, you're going to see this thing, this additional column pop up called prompts. And this is essentially what the agent should ask uh, of the customer in order to. Uh, kind of solicit this uh, response. But we're going to ask them what the reservation number is. Right? So we're going to type, what is your reservation number? Question mark. And we can hit close. OK. And then so this, the, what this represents, this is this slot filling concept that Deanna had mentioned. Right? So you think about this, this flow at a really high level. We've, the, the agent has determined that the customer is trying to change the name on the reservation. Um, and its job is to make sure to collect all of the information that you need as the travel agent in order to uh, fulfill that intent. Okay, And so we can add any number of parameters and say, maybe you also need their address for some reason, or uh, the date of the res reservation or verification code, anything like that. You can add additional parameters and anything that it, uh, the agent has not been able to automatically pull out, it will just go ahead and ask questions uh, until it gets everything fulfilled that is required. Okay. Does that make sense? Great. Um, 
on that, along those lines, when they change, want to change their reservation, uh, we're going to need to know what their new name is. So we're going to create another parameter. We're going to call it, uh, we're going to call it new name. We're going to give it a type of sys dot person. The value will be dollar sign new name. And we're going to define a prompt. It says, what is the new name for the reservation? Last step before we test this one out is uh, we're going to give it a, an updated response. Okay, so instead of just thank you, given name, which, or thank you, Vinay, it's not a super useful response in this case. We are going to say, I've changed the name on the reservation uh, to you know, whatever reservation number they gave you. And then also we're going to pair it back to the revised name. Okay. We're going to hit save here. So now we're going to go ahead and test this agent out from the top. So um, change name on booking. Uh, sure, I can help you change the name on your reservation. Can I have your first name? I'm going to type the name. I'm going to ask me for what is your reservation number? My reservation number is 998. And that is not what I expected to see. Oh, maybe I just didn't press enter. Okay, so when I type 998, it says, what is the new name for the reservation? Now I'm going to change it to Matt. Great. It says, thank you, Vinay. I've changed the name on the reservation number 998 to be Matt. So this did everything that we expected. All right. And that that is how we do slot filling. And then so what we're going to do is uh, check our progress in the quick lab and it looks like we did everything correctly as a final step uh, what we're going to do is just export this agent um, and so revisiting that settings page that i uh, showed you at the top of this uh, demo uh, if we come in here go to import and export you can export your entire uh, agent as a zip file and you can use that for later import into a, a new agent uh, or new dialog flow. Now, that is particularly useful in these quick labs because they kind of build on each other. So when you do the next uh, skill uh, or the next lab, it's nice to be able to just import this, uh, what we've done here, so you don't have to start from scratch there. And so, that's essentially how we how we create a you know basic dialogue flow agent. We've covered uh, training intents, uh, and the way we did that was giving it some sample phrases, uh, giving dialogues, and then dialogue flow would take those sample phrases and automatically uh, generate a machine learning model for you, so that it can understand what it is that uh, your customer is trying to do. We also uh, generated follow-up intents. So when we figured out, in this example, we only did one intent, but in most agents, it's likely the case that you're gonna have many different things uh, that a customer may want to do when interacting with your agents. So you will have multiple intents. And then for each of those, you'll probably have follow-on questions, right? So once you've established what the intent is, let's have a follow-on intent to get 
whatever follow on information we need to service that intent. Um, and, and in order to do that, uh, slot filling is a very useful way to make it very conversational. Um, and so that that concludes the the lab portion of this. Did you guys have any questions about you know, how we built the agent? Uh, any questions about any of the steps we've taken so far? I thought this was pretty cool, though, to, to see the back end, how all this works. As a marketer, I love this stuff, but uh, I don't usually see the uh, the back end of it. Yeah, so one, like, I mean, since we have a little bit of time and, you know, if nobody has any questions, to, there's a really quick way to show some awesome power of this platform. Uh, and it, this isn't part of the lab. I think it actually is one of the, the later sessions that you'd go through. Um, but as you know, Deanna and I were playing with this particular lab, being able to add a phone number quickly. So right now we've been interacting with this with this agent just through that side panel up to the right. Um, but you can very quickly say, "I want to want to put a phone number in front of this thing and have people be able to call in to this agent." And it's just you know, I just went over to integrations and clicked phone gateway. If I don't care about the area code, I can just hit next here. and create and if anybody here wants to call this phone number you would actually be able to interact with the agent that we just created right so uh, it would be able to in the same way that we were typing understand your speech figure out how to match that against those intents ask you to um, yeah, respond with follow-up intents right so if you called it and said hey i want to uh, change the name on my, my, my reservation, it would respond with, uh, you know, what is your reservation number? What would you like to change your name to? Um, so that's a super cool uh, capability and it makes things really, really easy once you have the agent set up. Dave, I think I'll pass it back to you. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Um, I will hopefully share the right screen here. Um, Yeah, so thanks everybody for attending. Um, just wanted to take a, a little bit of time to let you guys know that if you complete this quest, you do have 30 days to complete the entire quest, and then you'll get this cool badge. Um, and that's something that you can put on your profile and LinkedIn, um, show your boss, it's a lot of fun. Um, so please go ahead and finish off that quest. Um, if you have the chance, if you have any questions around that, reach out to us and we can help you with it. Finally, I did wanna take a moment and just let you guys know that you know, as we close out, thank you to Deanna and Vinay for leading us and everybody that joined us. Um, as a Google Cloud partner focused on collaboration design, we really are dedicated to improving collaboration throughout uh, the organization, be that internally between your departments or individual employees, um, or if it's externally between employees and customers or other key audiences. And conversational AI is a fantastic example of the latter um, and how we really help our clients fully leverage Google Cloud to improve collaboration and drive their company's success forward. Um, so we're gonna be reaching out post event with some additional resources around Contact Center AI. And we're also gonna be offering attendees a complimentary consultation to discuss any challenges or initiatives that you have around Contact Center AI specifically, or just improving your collaboration generally. Um, I highly recommend you take advantage of this opportunity uh, to talk to one of our uh, cloud consultants. Um, with that, you know, I want to thank everybody for joining us today and, um, you know, look forward to having you guys on some additional events.